never heard of the island territory of Montserrat before, we wouldn't blame you. Located in the southeastern Caribbean, Montserrat is an overseas territory of the United Kingdom, and after Plymouth became its first European settlement in 1632, it remained largely forgotten by the world at large. Yet a few hundred years later, its existence would come to an abrupt end. In July of 1995, a series of large eruptions at Sufreira Hills Volcano, which had been inactive for centuries, sent pyroclastic flows and ash across the southern portion of the island. As a result, by December of that year, the entire town was completely evacuated, with residents being allowed to come back in 1997. However, in June of 1997, the volcano began erupting once again, with these eruptions leading to a permanent evacuation of most of Plymouth's citizens soon afterwards. Luckily for the Montserrat Islanders, this evacuation had been well-timed, because between August 4th and August 8th of that year, a further series of large eruptions destroyed approximately 80% of the town, burying it under 1.4 meters of ash. This hot material burned many of the buildings, making habitation nearly impossible for many of the residents, and causing the British Navy to intervene and evacuate those who had remained in the city. As a result, a large portion of the island's residents ended up moving back to the mainland United Kingdom and in turn the island became economically depressed due to both its population decrease and the destruction of most of its economically profitable businesses. Nowadays, the southern area of the island continues to be deemed as an exclusion zone, as volcanic activity in the area has not yet paused. Yet if you'd like to visit, there are tours that organize excursions to this exclusion zone. However, considering that the volcano is still active, you'd definitely be entering at your own risk. If you were to turn back the clock to the Middle Ages, you'd see a Famagusta that is far different than the version of it that's present today. That's because during this time period, it was the island's most important port city, as it was a gateway to trade with the extremely rich ports of the Levant. However, since then, Cyprus has experienced a lot of turmoil, and in response to a failed Greek coup in 1974, Turkish troops invaded the city that same year. In particular, they annexed the Varosha district of the city, which not only led to the expulsion of all the Greek Cyproids inhabiting it, but the sectioning off of the city with barbed wire and widespread looting by the Turks. Thankfully, since then, the situation has largely de-escalated, and today Cyprus is in a state of uneasy peace between both Greek and Turkish factions on the island. However, in spite of this, the de facto Turkish government of northern Cyprus has forbidden the old Greek Cyprites to re-enter, not only disallowing them from living in their homes, but even forbidding them to reclaim their valuables. The reason for this are extremely complicated, although factors such as security and the commercial importance of the city have all been cited. Yet until a completely unified Cyprus becomes a reality, this will likely remain the status quo. However, in 2017, Northern Cyprus made a surprising move when they opened Varosha's world-class beaches to Turkish Cyprus and Turkish citizens. And in 2019, they took this one step further by announcing that Varosha's formerly world-class hotels would be reopening by the end of 2020. However, with many of the specifics still unclear, only time will tell who will be allowed to enter.